Hey guys, what's going on? It's John from Album Review TV, and I'm here to talk about my 10 favorite albums of 2010. I know it's a little bit late because it's the middle of January, but I hadn't had a chance to make a video. I've got my other channels, Compton182, click to check that out, and my second channel, Jedi5, and my Talk Back to Me channel, uh, which is my vlog channel, so click three in a row. I'm going to put the links right there. Anyway. Top 10 albums of 2010 for me, and these are albums that were either re released in 2009 or 2010. This is what I've been listening to the most throughout the year. What's playing right now in the background is someone you may have never heard of, the Crash Kings. Anyone heard of them? Leave a comment below if you love the Crash Kings. These guys are awesome. I love rock music, and it's my favorite genre of music. And these guys are keeping it real. And they don't use like the typical things, like they don't use lead guitar instead of a lead guitar they use a piano and it's really cool so I'm gonna put a link to all the bands that I'm talking about I'm gonna put a link to their Facebook down below so you can go and check out their music and listen to it for free and you know you can preview it and see if you like it and stuff um, but the Crash Kings released their self-titled album which is their first studio release in May of 2009 so you guys should check that out it's 10 songs and I love like I never say this almost never like unless it's like bands I really love but I never heard of these guys and I just listened to the album and I loved every song on it Cardiology by Good Charlotte is my second favorite album of 2010 now I'm gonna have to admit that I forgot about Good Charlotte for a while after uh, Good Morning Revival they did that and it was either 2006 or 2007 and I had completely they had fallen off the radar it seemed like and you know, I just, I was just like, when they, I heard that that was coming out, I was like, oh, Good Charlotte's back. And I was like, I didn't know what to expect. But I gave it a listen, and I just like, you can hear it playing in the background. I love, like, almost, there was like two songs, two, that I didn't like. But there was 15 songs, there were 15 great songs. I would recommend buying it, or at least listening to it and going and checking it out. You know, their Facebook's going to be down below. But I didn't know what to expect. I, the pop punk genre is one of my favorites, and... This was the most pop punk record I've heard in a while. You know, it's been dying off as people try to go more mainstream. This album was great, and I suggest you go check it out. You guys know I'm a huge My Chemical Romance fan, and don't get mad at me, but the Danger Days, I know a lot of people didn't like it, but Danger Days, The True Lives of the Fabulous Killjoys by My Chem is my third favorite album of the year. I liked almost all of the songs. The Kids from Yesterday was one song I did not like, and Summertime. But every other song on there, even the bonus track, We Don't Need Another Song About California, I liked all of those. My favorite song off the album has to be Na Na Na, the lead single, because that just... <laughs> what a song. That's one of my all-time favorite songs. Uh, I would recommend going and checking it out, you know? I mean, I'm obviously recommending all of these albums, so I don't want any hate comments about, like, why are you recommending it? Obviously, these are my favorite albums, so obviously I'm going to recommend them to you. Um, but I really think you should give this one a listen and give it a chance. If you listen to it once and you're like, uh, you know, I just didn't care for it, listen to it again. I did the same thing. I listened. I had to listen to it like two or three times before I really started loving it. My fourth favorite album of the year is also someone you may not have heard of, Manchester Orchestra. Anyone heard of them? They had one hit song, I've, and it was a hit on rock stations. I've Got Friends was the title track. It was released on the radio back in 2009 or so, somewhere around there. But I just recently listened to the whole album, and I absolutely loved it. Like, the, it's got such a different feel to it than most music. Um, Shake It Out and The Only One are some of my favorite tracks on it, along with I've Got Friends, which is obviously one of my favorites of all time. And that's a, it's just a really good album. It's really different. If you like, if you want to mix it up, if you want to get away from Kesha and Justin Bieber and all that crap. You know, you need to start listening to stuff like this, and it's going to change your perception on music and define what good music actually is. Down With Webster, a Canadian rap rock group, is someone I had never heard of until October of this year when I went to a 303 concert, but they opened up for 303. They were one of the opening acts, and I absolutely love them. Down With Webster has just started getting more, more popular and building momentum. I think this 303, when they toured with them, I think that's been building their popularity. But some rap rock groups are just really dumb and you just, they're just like, eh, you know, like, I don't want to hear this. But these guys are really good, and especially live. They put on a great concert. Like, some of my favorite songs off of the, this album is called Time to Win Volume 1, and it's seven songs, but it's really good. Like, I like all, I like every song on it. And 
I don't know, it's just like really upbeat and you know, it's got a good beat and rhythm and stuff to it, it gets you pumped up. And I really enjoy listening to that and it actually, as you can see, it's higher on my year end charts than 303. And I never even heard of them until like October when they opened for 303, so that's saying something. Battle Studies by John Mayer is my number six pick for the year. I know it was released in November of 2009, I believe, and I believe it was his fourth studio album. Could correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but it was a. I really enjoyed it. You know, like some people were saying that, well, you know, haters gonna hate and say, eh, they changed their style too much. But John Mayer is just doing his thing. He's playing his guitar and he's writing songs. Yeah, he may be a douchebag in real life, but who cares? He's making great music. But it's a really good album. Like, he's writing songs like, who says, like, just like, who says I can't do this? Who says I can't do that? It's true. And uh, some of the songs like Heartbreak Warfare, he's writing of the same themes and stuff. But I've always, like, loved John Mayer. And uh, this was another great album from him. Surprisingly, number seven on my chart is Escape the Fate's self-titled album. Now, I've always liked Escape the Fate, but I've never, like, been a huge fan of, like, their entire albums. I would like certain songs off of the albums. But this album was really good. Ever since they lost Ronnie, their lead singer, um, and replaced him with that Craig guy, I don't, I don't know if I, I thought they had as much of an edge as they used to, but this album was really well put together. I was listening to it. I wasn't expecting too much from it. I was just kind of listening to it, you know, like, in the background. A lot of the songs had, like, a dark theme to them, like Gorgeous Nightmare, which is playing right now and other songs like Issues, Massacre, and Lost in Darkness. Lost in Darkness is my favorite on the album. They all have like a really dark sound to them, but it's really cool. And I think you guys should check it out. If, even if you don't like Escape the Fate, you know, just give it a chance. Maybe, maybe you'll like this. This is embarrassing. I forgot to record number eight on the charts, so I had to go back. And when I was editing, I realized that I skipped over 303, which came in at number eight with their album Streets of Gold. Now, this album was not as enjoyable as want like the one of my favorite albums of all time all the songs on that were great they didn't do as much rap rapping and stuff like on uh, streets of gold but I, I still felt that it was a good album songs like r.i.p uh i didn't care for my first kiss but r.i.p was a great song and i can do anything and uh love 2012 anything like that i liked all of those songs my favorite on the album was probably Double Vision or else I can do anything. It's between those two. So I think I think you guys should just at least check it out, you know. But I know that 303 is not for everyone. My number nine pick for the year is a rap album from rapper B.O.B. It's called The Adventures of Bobby Ray. You guys have to have heard of him, right? Everyone's heard of him. B.O.B. really blew up on the scene this year with his hit single, Nothing On You, featuring Bruno Mars, who now has his own solo career. I'm not that big of a Bruno Mars fan, but I liked his, uh, him singing the chorus on this song. Nothing On You is my favorite on the album, followed by Don't Let Me Fall, and then probably Magic. Airplanes, eh, overrated. If you have it, I'm sure you've heard it, most likely, but if you haven't checked out B.O.B. yet, give him a chance. I'm not a huge rap fan. I'm, B.O.B., Lil Wayne, and Drake are really the only rappers I try to keep up with. But B.O.B. is really talented, and I think you guys would like him. My tenth favorite album of the year, to wrap things up, it's Brief Carolina with their album Hello Fascination. Not many people know about Brief Carolina. I discovered them a long time ago, back in 2000. I, th I'm, I want to say late 2007. My friend Craig was just Googling random bands on back when MySpace music was popular, you know, and he was just searching and I think he typed in like something Carol he typed in Carolina and Breathe Carolina came up on the music results and he showed them to me and I didn't care for it at first, but I started I gave him another chance and they put out this new album and it was just like amazing. Like all the songs on it, they're an electronic group, kinda like an electronic, you know, they have catchy courses and they have a little you can you can hear that they element like screaming like incorporate that into the music and it all works really well uh, I didn't like them at first like I said but maybe if you guys listen to a few of the tracks like give it a few ch give it a little bit of a chance and I think you're gonna come around and if not hey I mean you tr at least you tried some new music I'm just trying to help get you guys away from the mainstream 
because I'm personally I am trying to break away from mainstream music because I'm just sick of it you know if you don't have talent and you're not writing your own songs and you're not being original at all you just want airtime and you just want money I think these guys I've presented 10 albums that are just you know like solid non they're some of you know they're popular but they're not mainstream you're not gonna see these guys top in the charts except for B.O.B. but he's still like you know he's writing good music and it just happens that people are liking that and making it popular which is good and I wish that would happen more often like if My Chemical Romance could have a number one song or Crash Kings that would be awesome but people these days it just doesn't seem like they know what good music is so I hope you guys enjoyed this and I think you should really check out these albums and you know, you're going to get a broader taste in music.